Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open, so I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake, so I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the bricks' house. No one answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what the, that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt a cold coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, And your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fella, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed it up with all that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar.